Welcome everybody. This is the meeting of the Jenkins Documentation Special Interest Group. Um, let's take a look at the agenda and then we'll, what we'll do is review the agenda, then walk through the, the pieces that are on the agenda. Sharing my screen. And here's what I've got. Um, report on previous action items. A brief point on a uh, brief point on collaboration with other special interest groups. We'll talk briefly about the Jenkins REST API on Swagger Hub. Then we've got a, a demo proposed for the plugin site to GitHub integration. Oleg, I think you're our, our demonstrator on that, right? Yeah, I'll uh, show some demos today. Great, excellent. We've got a topic on the Community Bridge subproject for docs that should be discussed further. And then in the usual pattern, I'd like to go over the stats just to show that, hey, we're, we're keeping track of things and we'll talk about how the project, how the documentation project is progressing. Are there any other items that need to go on the agenda, either from you, Oleg, or from you, Marky? Nothing for me other than maybe to add about the elections process and the new uh, documentation uh, officer role. Oh, that's a very good one. All right, governance board, elections, and documentation. Um, was it? Is it the title is officer? Yeah, good topic. Great, thanks. Okay. All right, then let's let's proceed from there. So previous action items, I've started the pull request on docs project ideas. It's a large effort. I will continue that. Um, it is not ready for review. It's not ready for merge yet. It is ready for review. Thanks Oleg for first review, much appreciated. And regular summary posts, I will uh, mark to post. I will post one uh, to the mailing list today when I send out the agenda from this meeting. Any other action items that I've missed in the uh, in the list of action items? Okay, the next topic, collaboration with other special interest groups. So one of the topics, Marky, had been uh, documenting the infrastructure. Anything you'd like to report there in terms of what you've learned and experienced so far? Uh, I can say that it is a scary place to look at. It is so wide and so vast, uh, and that is going to take a considerable amount of time. Okay. And Oleg, on the configuration as code plugins, it seems like that's that project is making rapid progress. Uh, anything that the doc sig needs to be aware of there? Well, as everybody, we will appreciate any contributions with regards to documentation. I would say that uh, the documentation is pretty good. Um, still, uh, there is a lot of opportunities to improve it, to add more demos. There are still some missing features. For example, surprisingly, REST API. I guess we will get uh, to it uh, the next topic, uh, but yeah, right now REST API for computation is code is not documented at all. So you say the REST API needs to be documented for configuration as code? Yes, so there is a newbie friendly ticket for that. Well, I'm not sure how much it's newbie friendly, but uh, definitely we need to do something about that. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I wasn't aware of a REST API. That's, that's cool. That's good. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. REST API exists. Yeah. yeah even a CLI exists. Uh, CLI is also not that documented. Uh, but yeah, it's something we could improve there. Okay. Thank you. So, and you indicated that the REST API may not be newbie, newbie, new, as newbie friendly. Well, it's newbie friendly, just uh, requires some time to process ah. it because basically you need to go through code and extract it through, uh, from code. It's uh, a single pass. I will put a link uh, to the Jira ticket later. 
what will GitHub issue, but yeah. Something we, we would appreciate help if somebody is interested. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so that, that could also be listed as one of the project ideas of things that we, we would take others help in happily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anything else on collaboration with other six? Okay. I don't have something specific. We have some follow-ups uh, related to documentation in the Google Summer of Code retrospective. Uh, so yeah, there is usual demand to have some clarity about contributing guidelines and other things. Oh, basically nothing to do in terms of feedback. Um, but yeah, maybe we will do another round of documentation improvements um, uh, before GSOC 2020. So we did a lot uh, in 2019, uh, but still uh, there could be a lot of enhancement. Great, thank you. So the, we had discussed two weeks ago the possibility of hosting the Jenkins REST API on Swagger Hub with a proposal from Abuja uh, Sharma. Uh, I'd created the organization and asked Smart Bear by email if they would be willing to host it for us. We are now very near the end of our 14 day period and no response. So, and I have not posted anything on my own. Um, I'll refresh that request to Smart Bear and uh, Mark to create one more placeholder documenting. The idea was document the notify commit API as a very popular API. Yeah, I wonder where we can get a response from them in uh, Twitter. Uh, good, good question, good suggestion. Yeah. yeah, because if common channels don't work, Twitter usually works. Um, so yeah, maybe it's something we could uh, do maybe next week. Or yeah, I can... Uh, yeah, I can try it today. I've got... got that's a good idea, very good idea. Okay. All right. So then I think we're ready to talk the plugin site to GitHub integration subproject. Oleg, would you like to go ahead and give an overview? I am so thrilled with this. I like already what two plugins I maintain have benefited significantly from it. Thanks a bunch. Okay, happy to do that. So yeah, unfortunately we don't have Zbigniew on the call. Uh, yeah, so if you stop screen sharing, I will uh, do screen share. And yeah, so full disclaimer, uh, the work I'm presenting uh, has been done mostly by Zbigniew uh, Kanechny, who is one of Jenkins contributors and who contributed a lot uh, to the uh, Jenkins resources. Uh, yeah, there was also a lot of help from Olivier Vermin. Uh, his infrastructure. So basically, I just did some glue code and facilitation in this project. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, not just my work. Uh, but uh, yeah, I want to share this story a bit um, because uh, it's really important to the Jenkins community, especially to the documentation specialists group. So, if we take one random plugin, for example, let's take the new plugin, just uh, you can see that um, yeah, the most of documentation is in, uh, available on the wiki nowadays. Uh, and yeah, if you navigate to wiki, you can experience common issues like loading time, etc. The layouts are not always good. So this layout is more or less okay. Yeah, it might be a bit obsolete. There are some working components like message from Patron on Jenkins. This program is deprecated, but uh, yeah, now we move to the plugin. Um, yeah, and uh, in many cases, uh, documentation is uh, basically available on Wiki. Uh, in Jenkins, we have a plugin portal, it's plugin Jenkins IO, and there you can uh, find the documentation also. So, for example, uh, uh, Jenkins plugin sites, uh, many plugin pages, they basically redirect uh, you to plugin portal. And here you can see basically the same page because uh, this plugin site retrieves information from Wiki, and it was a default behavior uh, for years. 
And unfortunately, for many plugins, it doesn't work as you may expect because uh, uh, just a wiki was quite uh, difficult to use. So, in many cases, you can see pages like that. But, uh, plugin provides a tool and stuff, blah, blah, blah. See the communication here, change look here. So, GitHub, GitHub. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is one use case. So there are also other use cases, for example, configuration is called Romeo. Uh, here, well, that is not the communication at all because uh, there is no metadata in Home XML. Uh, so this is uh, an issue for Jenkins users because when we get to these pages, so these pages are in from default size, and basically they can see nothing. Um, uh, same for contributors, it's really difficult to use Wiki. For some time, we had an extremely difficult capture there. As far as I know now, the capture is removed, but uh, still uh, contributing here, it's quite complicated. There is basically no way to take these uh, pages uh, from uh, vandalism. There is basically no way to have code review for changes proposed by others. And there is no recognition and whatever. Um, and yeah, the all, one of obvious answers to that is uh, documentation as code. And uh, this is a solution which is being used in many plugins. So since uh, Mark said about uh, his plugins, let's go to this plugin. Okay, so here you can see some documentation uh, on GitHub. So what is an advantage that anybody can uh, ju just edit this documentation by clicking this button, editing anything, uh, previewing pages, and then sending pull request so that one of plugin maintainers will review it, integrate it, and after that, the documentation ends. Uh, plus you get uh, your contribution, you also uh, get referenced in the change logs in the case of major changes. So yeah, it helps. So I'm not sure, do you have any documentation changes in the change log? No, because I only just barely implemented the, the first change. So there is, okay. there's only one, it's published to the publisher. Okay, so, but yeah, we can take a configuration as code, for example, here you can see that there are documentation updates. So, for example, we uh, have a staged release that hasn't been released yet, but yeah, here you can see there's changes in documentation. You can scroll down and you see, can see that there are changes in documentation which basically become a part of our product. This documentation is version, so for every release, you can access documentation for this particular version, which uh, was also not the case for Wiki. So, users of plugins, uh, Fox versions uh, can use this documentation. Uh, so, yeah, basically having documentation as code is a win, win, win for everyone. So it's a win for contributors, it's a win for maintainers, and it's a win for users. Uh, that's why it's important uh, to have this documentation. And many plugins de facto moved uh, to that long, long ago. The problem was with our plugin website because, yeah, it basically looks like that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, thanks to Zbigniew uh, and thanks to other contributors, uh, we had uh, good progress on that. There is a metric in Jenkins Jira about um, adding uh, integration between our plugin site and um, uh, GitHub. It's not only about publishing uh, um, documentation, there are other uh, stories, for example, publishing change logs. So, yeah, you have seen these change logs, it's a release drafter. It's also a GitHub integration. Uh, plus, there are other stories like uh, taking topics as plugin labels from GitHub, uh, getting uh, documentation, and getting some statistics like stars and contributors numbers from GitHub. So basically, making this portal uh, uh, more accessible and providing some additional information to users. Uh, and documentation is the first step. This first step has been delivered. Um, there is an announcement in the um, uh, developer mailing list. And uh, here you can see that uh, there are just a few examples provided. Basically, when this change was implemented, we had around uh, uh, 20 plugins which used uh, GitHub uh, as a, which we re referenced Git and GitHub as a documentation site, just because uh, plugin developers uh, didn't uh, reference Wiki as they were supposed to do. This approach didn't work. Uh, so, but uh, right now, if you specify um, GitHub as a URL, so for example, here, if you go to configuration as code, here we have plugin uh, model here. And uh, if you just uh, use um, expression like that, so URL, um, you point to GitHub, 
then uh, once your plugin is released, um, uh, Jenkins Update Center will process that, inject that links, and then plugin site will be able to display that. So how it looks like? So for example, uh, here's a configuration as code. Uh, this is a new documentation which is being published and it goes uh, straight uh, from uh, GitHub. So with all the images, uh, with uh, all hyperlinks, so related links, etc. all of that works. Uh, and yeah, you just specify URL and directly you will get the communication published automatically. Uh, if you want to see how the previous page to look like, yeah, you, uh, it's one of five Jenkins performers, etc. Uh, but uh, yeah, wiki for this plugin looked like that. Yeah, so basically like that, and the opposite change log. So anyone who was uh, visiting this page, uh, they just uh, saw this opposite information instead of real documentation. Uh, so yeah, the change was announced uh, a bit more than one week ago, and uh, over last week we had uh, more than 30 plugins migrated. So just in one week, uh, we got a pretty good adoption and there are play major plugins, for example, Gradle plugin, uh, uh, Kubernetes plugin, uh, um, also uh, Mailer, Cloud Strategy, and uh, many other uh, top plugins. So they moved uh, the documentation. So now this documentation is being retrieved uh, from GitHub. And yeah, basically we invite all contributors, all plugin maintainers to start using this flow because it's much more convenient. And really we need a one line change in, if you use Maven flow or Gradle flow, uh, everything is, uh, will be published. And I guess that Prometheus plugin uh, also uses GitHub documentation now. Actually not. Nope, I haven't implemented it yet. I just, I just I just made a note to say, God, I forgot I got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe there is even a pull request for that. So yeah, uh, our recent uh, plugins, for example, a folder authorization from Google Summer of Code, GitLab branch source, also audit log from our feature, all of them uh, started using GitHub documentation from the beginning. Uh, so yeah, now uh, all these repositories uh, automatically get uh, good documentation. Okay, so basically that was my update. Um, there is still a lot of uh, plans to do. So for example, in links, I want to have change log links here, maybe on the publishing of the documentation because we can render change logs right in the plugin website. Uh, same for um, uh, issues, etc. So there will be a lot of follow-up changes. And there is also uh, other changes in the review right now. Uh, Jenkins Infra uh, plugin site API. So it's a back end of this uh, uh, project. So uh, there is a change from this beginning to support arbitrary URLs. Because right now we can retrieve on the readme from the root. But with uh, this change, we will be able to retrieve uh, uh, readme or other pages from uh, another locations. So we can use it, for example, uh, to publish change log MD or to publish additional documentation pages. And yeah, our only limitation will be GitHub uh, API rate limit because yeah, it's really a problem. Uh, so plugin site API, API caches all uh, the outputs. So basically, it's one uh, request uh, per release. But still, uh, yeah, uh, there are things uh, to be aware of there. But let's see how we scale. So Oleg, what is the refresh rate once now that I have now that I have registered the platform labeler plugin and I have done that. Um, mm. I've released a version of it and it's in there. So when I, uh, no dash. Uh, okay. Sorry. So I've, I've released it. If I update it on GitHub, how, how is that update detected? Is it only on the next release? So the publication only occurs at release? Or is there some periodic periodic uh, polling process that checks for change? Uh, yeah, there is periodic polling. Um, so basically, there is cache with expiration. Uh, it's about uh, six hours, if I recall correctly. I don't. I need to change uh, check the code. But uh, yeah, so the documentation will be always updated when you cut a new release because there is cache validation logic. 
Um, and uh, it will be also periodically updated even if you do not do releases. So right now, uh, this plugin um, update set shows master branch. Uh, there is a ticket uh, which suggests pulling documentation from label, uh, but uh, yeah, it's not implemented yet. And uh, yeah, in some cases it may be advantage, in some cases it may be disadvantage. So I'm not sure whether we will implement it finally. Mm. Okay, great. So so polled, there's a periodic cache refresh, mm -hmm. and and right now it's pulling from the master branch with prov provisions potentially in the future to allow me to say that I want to show something, a different mm -hmm. file, not just read me, and yes. that I want to pull from a specific branch. Yes, so that's uh, the problem. Okay, any questions? Well, so so one thing that I had, had suggested on the list was it would it be okay if I started submitting, for instance, tickets to various what I'd call interesting plugins, proposing newbie friendly tickets to make this transition for plugins. It seems like a task that would fit with someone who is not terribly experienced but could submit to individual plugins a pull request to make the transition to them. Yeah, Hacktoberfest was the place I was thinking of it. Yeah, right. So my plan is to have a ticket template for that because I really wanted to, to create a bunch of tickets uh, for uh, plugins we would like to migrate. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that uh, right now migration requires manual changes. So there is no plugin installed on uh, Confluence which allows to extract a ski doc or, or markdown from this page. There are such plugins. So I wanted to chat with Jenkins Infra team before really um, creating these tickets because if we offer a way to export uh, the skeleton of the page, it would help a lot uh, newcomer contributors because otherwise, in some sense, it will be newbie friendly ticket, uh, but uh, yeah, it might be also a monkey work. Yeah, usually when I re um, uh, retrieve the documentation, uh, I do a lot of copy edits because this documentation is uh, mostly obsolete in many cases. But it's still better, would be better if there was a generation of ASCII doc of markdown from this page so that they can save some time. Well, and along the lines of that automated generation, at least for me and the documentation I was generating, mm -hmm. the online help that came for the various fields or things was actually quite useful as a source to put into the documentation. Mm -hmm. I just copied and pasted it though. So a good idea to use these documentation sources as mm -hmm. the beginning skeleton. Yeah. So yeah, it's my plan. Yeah, I'm working on the Oktoberfest prep work. And as a part of that, uh, there will be definitely a lot of tickets for documentation migration. Because uh, this story is important to the community. This story is helpful to users and uh, yeah, it's a new behind there. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I, I love the results we've got so far. Um, I had a question: Should we? How did you? How do you get the count of number of of plugins that have adopted the technique? And should we track it as part of the regular doc sig to say, "Hey, how are we doing?" Put up a graph in part of our metrics, or not relevant yet? Well, I basically do it uh, manually. How to do that? If you go to updates Jenkins IO, so this is our update center. Uh, it uh, reflects uh, this uh, update center to repository on Jenkins infrastructure. So it's our internal update center, which basically generates information for uh, ones who use uh, updates Jenkins IO as a source of updates. But there are also additional metadata which is exposed specifically for plugin side. For example, there is plugin documentation URLs. So this is a JSON file which basically includes uh, documentation URLs for um, um, every plugin. Later, there will be also changelog URL and other fields. So this is how I plan to um, add support of more fields. Um, and yeah, how you check how many plugins use GitHub? Um, basically, yeah. like that. Yeah, now that. Uh, yeah, it's, so this approach has some disadvantages, but yeah, you can easily see that there are 52 plugins which define GitHub as a source of documentation. So these are 52 released plugins. So it means that uh, 
since uh, I started the project, uh, there were 28 uh, plugins which got released with uh, GitHub documentation. Uh, but yeah, here you can uh, check the list. Not all these plugins uh, actually uh, being published as a documentation because in some cases you can see that uh, the documentation points to alternate GitHub organizations. In such case, we do not publish this documentation right now. Uh, we could, but uh, yeah, it's not implemented, and I'm not sure whether we want to implement that. Um, in some cases, yeah, there are just, for example, for Perl plugins, uh, uh, it's also external source. In some cases, uh, there are ex custom paths. So, for example, yeah, so now quality gates it, uh, uh, points to readme MD. Yeah, even uh, if it's in master, uh, it won't be published right now. So I created a pull request to fix that. And uh, basically, this Binix uh, patch will also fix that once it's released. Uh, yeah, and there are also cases where just random stuff is being referenced from GitHub. But yeah, uh, in, for the most of the plugins, it's more or less uh, safe. For, so most of the plugins you can find in this list actually get published. Um, they think that not all plugins which migrated to GitHub documentation have been released yet. So, for example, I migrated all my plugins, uh, but I haven't released all my plugins yet because I want uh, to release it with some uh, uh, meaningful features to consumers. Because yeah, if I release a plugin with uh, uh, 100,000 installations uh, and basically everybody has to update the plugin just to pick up new documentation, uh, it doesn't feel right to me. But yeah. So yeah, that's uh, the current state. Any questions? No, thank you very much. That's that's quite impressive. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So yeah, if somebody wants to contribute, uh, basically there are two repositories. Uh, um, we have the code base. So this uh, is plug inside API. And that is also plug inside, which is front end. So if you are a JavaScript developer, you can contribute to the front end. There is a lot of changes which we could do there because the yeah, front end didn't evolve much since uh, the component was introduced. Uh, for plug inside the back, uh, back end, it's basically Java uh, with JT as a API server. So it just exposes REST API and then uh, this REST API gets consumed. So yeah, that's pretty easy. So in terms of the plugin site mm -hmm. itself, it's front-end JavaScript. I assume there that <clears throat> that's probably not newbie friendly, but a JavaScript developer would be a deeply appreciated addition to that that piece of the world. Yeah, and I, I would actually say that it's newbie friendly because, well, I'm not a JavaScript developer at all. Uh, but uh, I was able to get it uh, running in just a few minutes because it basically uses YAML. There is documentation for that, how to get it running, how to verify that. So, uh, and uh, yeah, I was able to get it uh, running almost immediately in development flow with uh, real time changes to, uh, for visualization. And the code itself is also pretty fine, especially for ones who is familiar with JavaScript and React. So, for example, here is my pull request for uh, collapsing implied dependencies uh, by default. So, instead of uh, having something like that, uh, having these dependencies collapsed. So, without prior knowledge of how React, etc., work, uh, I spent less than one hour to implement it. So, I think it's relatively new defender. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very yeah. much. Okay, so yeah, any contributions will be welcome. And I'll probably add it uh, to Hacktoberfest as well if I'm able to generate enough new friendly tickets. Okay, so if there is no questions, I will stop screen sharing. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so next topic was community bridge subprojects for docs. And I don't have a dramatic, anything dramatic to offer there other than that the crucial 
the key part of that is the uh, list of project ideas and that is being assembled now i i assume that two weeks from now when we meet next i'll have much further to discuss and uh, we'll, we'll begin developing it from there oh like any insights you need want to offer there how is the i assume the community bridge experiment with Slayton noons is progressing and anything that we need to learn from that well it's uh, the project itself is progressing uh, basically it's also related uh, to the documentation seek because uh, the objective of the project is to generate uh, instance specific uh, specifications of gcast yaml files uh, so basically, it will allow uh, to embed documentation, for example, in IDEs, because your JSON schema can be used as a source of documentation. Um, there is a good progress there. Um, we will likely ship our first code beats uh, in the next release. Um, yeah, there is a lot of things to be done, but yeah, the progress is being made. Uh, regarding uh, community bridge itself, um, I rather put uh, onboarding new projects on hold. So yesterday we had the advocacy and outreach uh, SIG discussion. So there are some issues in uh, community bridge right now. For example, it's not clear how we do payments to students because the documented process doesn't seem to work. Um, and also, um, yeah, there are just other minor issues. So right now, I wouldn't like to onboard new community bridge projects right now until we have a job with a specification of the process and until we figure out how to do payments. So, yeah, uh, project ideas would be definitely appreciated. Uh, and by the way, uh, there is also outreach happening now, and the outreach also allows doing documentation projects. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks very much. And sorry that I missed yesterday's session with advocacy, advocacy and outreach. Mm -hmm. Oleg, do you want to take the next topic, the uh, Hacktoberfest topic? Okay, just a second. Okay. Yeah, it started handling some bits. So Daniel Beck is reviewing my change log uh, for LTS release. Well, not change log, amendments for the change log. So you don't want to see typos. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I can share my screen. If you could transfer it. Uh, oh, so I need to stop sharing. Great. Yes. All right. Let me do that. Okay. It's still useful that uh, somebody has to explicitly stop screen sharing so that it's not like in handouts on air where you need a separate person just to verify what is exactly going to be to broadcast. Okay. Uh, so, do you see my screen? We do, yes. Okay. So, yeah, there is another announcement on the developer mailing list about um, Hacktoberfest. So basically, we are preparing for the Hacktoberfest. It got a bit delayed because yeah, there were many other things to handle. Uh, but uh, yeah, Hacktoberfest starts on October 1st, so we still have some time. Um, and yeah, we will definitely announce something. We have some uh, meetups in progress. But what we really need to prepare right now is a list of uh, projects. So for example, here you can see a list uh, from uh, 2018. So there is a number of projects for each of them. We had new friendly tickets, we had quick start guidelines, and we had uh, maintainers who were able to review changes. So I want to have something like that this year. Uh, so we have, for example, Jenkins Core for website, uh, they will stay there. But yeah, we definitely need uh, to leave link filters, which have been created already. Jenkins X will stay there. Um, yeah, we will be cross pollinating a bit uh, like we agreed with Scala. So, yeah, there will be also some bus Jenkins X, and yeah, we will be cross posting each other. Configuration scope will be there. Uh, then Jenkins Evergreen and Java 11 definitely won't be there, but yeah, maybe we we'll have, could have some additional projects. So, yeah, for example, uh, artwork, uh, documentation. Uh, yeah, and just documentation. So if there are any ideas what we could improve, so 
certain uh, wiki to GitHub migrations will be there, but uh, yeah, we could suggest other bits. For example, we can migrate some wiki to Jenkins.io. We still have a lot of uh, developer documentation, which is only on wiki, um, and which could be moved. So yeah, we could uh, use this opportunity to do that. Okay. So then the page that we have here, the 2018 page, will do something similar, I assume, for 2019. Yeah, yeah. yeah it will be pretty much the same. The only difference is that I want uh, this page to be completed as soon as possible. So here it's a blog post uh, for 2019. And there will be a page likely somewhere under seek or under events. I haven't decided yet. So maybe I'll create something like events October first, uh, and the day it will be uh, 2019 on this uh, online information. And then once we get somewhere to uh, October first the uh, timeline, we will just repost these pages and blog post. So that's my plan. Great. Uh, yeah, one thing that uh, I want to organize a meetup uh, around uh, uh, 1st of October. Um, so, yeah, for, I want to invite you, Mark, if you have uh, some availability, because yeah, we have some content about contributing to Jenkins. So, we could use this content as a, as a grand opening for October 1st. So, I want to have online meetup as an opening this year. I like I like that very much. I've had the notion, I think I'm going to try something even a little, uh, for me, a little more radical. I'm going to contact some local universities here that have technical writing programs mm -hmm. and ask if I could go talk to their technical writing class locally there and invite technical writers who are students at universities here nearby to, to join in during Hacktoberfest. I think it's a great opportunity for them to mm -hmm do something that they've never done before, but they will professionally when they graduate with their degree in technical writing. No, yeah, yeah, anything goes to open source. So it means that everything goes to portfolio. So why not? Excellent, thank you. Thanks very much. Now is, is Hacktoberfest, if I want to see progress, track progress and whatnot, should I be looking in the advocacy SIG? Is it, is it mostly on the mailing list? Where the where are you doing most of your status reports? Advocacy and outreach. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. just, uh, that's my plan. Excellent. Thank you. This, this one's going to be a lot of fun. We in, we also intend to do a meetup in in the Denver area. Here, we'll actually I hope to do it on a university campus, and and that way I've got a chance to get a whole different group of people involved. You mean October first event? Uh -huh. Right. I want to do one. I want to do one physically, and and mm -hmm. see if I can encourage more contributors in addition to the online work. Yeah, I will, I will create a Google Doc, or whatever, just to coordinate the stuff because yeah, we have uh, four meetups planned, and yeah, definitely, if you want to organize meetup anyway, it will be a help. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, none from me. So next topic had been related to governance board, elections, and the documentation officer. So uh, Marky, maybe we want to have you be the voice for this one as to get us yet another voice. Are you, would you be willing to be the voice describing? Yeah, totally. So uh, we had the governance board meeting and we made a, there was a lot of proposals voted on. One of those proposals was to add a new officer and that officer was for the documentation, which essentially is like the website officer uh, and it's redefined as the documentation. So uh, that was voted on, uh, it was approved unanimously. So that's awesome. And I believe the nominations start in two days. I believe it's the 15th. I have to double check on that. The 13th, but yeah, whatever. Oh, the 13th, today. Yeah. And uh, that goes through November. So super awesome. Uh, looking forward to it. 
Yeah, we're just checking uh, for nominations, but yes, it would be nice. Yeah, I lost and that's all. Thanks very much. Then we've got just a few minutes left. So I've been capturing for good or for bad uh, data, trying to see if, if the data might help us on our um, progress with regard to Jenkins.io. So the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation has a DevStat site. This graph was captured this just today for the last year of time to merge. So the, the time between opening of a pull request and its merge. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that the, the, the scale is uh, exponential. It's, um, yeah, nonlinear. And that first line, one hour, the second, 10 hours. And for the last four or five weeks, we've kept our median time to merge in the under 10-hour range. So we're being responsive. I think, I think that was a good sign that that's, okay, we're, we're handling things. We've got plenty of open pull requests still but good progress. Our number of contributors and the contributions in the last month have increased compared to two weeks ago and four weeks ago. The graph shows that and our number of open pull requests is actually down with the number of closed up significantly. So we've, last time we met, we had 15 or more pull requests open. We're now down to 10 open, doing good job progress, processing them. Um, I don't know if these measures are useful or not. It's just hard for me to generate the measures after the fact, so I've been capturing them, and we can always ignore them. I think it's good data to have. So that covers all the topics that were planned for the meeting. Anything else that needs to be discussed here today? Maybe. Nothing for me. Yeah, we could spend some time to discuss whether we could facilitate uh, attendance uh, in these meetings because yeah, we have apparently more contributors working on documentation than contributors joining the SIG meetings. So I wonder what, what we could do in order to improve the situation. Yeah, one of the ways is to just agree that, for example, uh, every month we do a demo and, for example, we could run it as online meetup or something like that. Maybe there will be two months. For example, uh, yeah, we have some stories. Uh, if we figure out what to do with Swagger Hub, if we figure out, uh, yeah, we can uh, demo the documentation side, maybe something else from uh, our previous achievements. And it would be a good thing uh, just to uh, yeah, have online meetup or maybe developer huddle like uh, we were discussing before. So let's see. Yeah, it's just an option how we could uh, make it, uh, how we could improve the outreach. Right. Yeah. I, I also think it would be good if we started, you know, some of uh, like a social media campaign right before meetings or some some way to generate interest online. Yeah. So, so when we, you when you say social media, Mark, in that case, you're thinking things like Twitter? Um, yeah, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, you know, if we could have the Jenkins account is, is tweeting, you know, hey, the document SIG is, is about to begin. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. I like those. Um, so in terms of hosting an online meetup, Oleg, would that be something like this where we just do it on a, with a, with, with a session through Zoom or are you envisioning that we do something through Google Doc, through Google online meets? What, how, how is that working for you? Uh, well, I would prefer to just use Zoom. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I don't have strong opinion. Okay. And but this and this would I assume be something that would happen 
outside of the meeting. It's intended to promote people, persuade them, hey, you should come. Here are cool things that are happening in docs. If we, if we called it something like docs this month and regularly had the meeting just to show, here's the last month's worth of cool things that have happened, is that sort of what you're envisioning? Mm, yep. So yeah, basically we can uh, use the existing platform. So I will be his system about creating something else. Uh, yeah, I have some concerns about YouTube channel because yeah, we basically have a, a single YouTube channel for all meeting recordings and for white events like demos, etc. But yeah, it's a minor thing. Uh, well, just yeah, just by doing online meetup, I think it won't hurt, especially if you can uh, show some user facing features. Good. Because, okay. Yeah, over the past year we changed a lot on the Jenkins IO side and plugin side now. Also, what else can we find? I like that. That's a good idea. Let me take the action item to get that scheduled and let's mm -hmm. try it. Yeah, so maybe not committing to every month right now. Uh, maybe we could just try one event. I plan to do the same for Jenkins Developer Tools. So this is Jenkins Developer Huddle. I was thinking about. Well, basically documentation can be a part of this effort or it could be a separate thing, but yeah, may, maybe if we could run one event and see how it goes. I like that. Great. And you say you were calling it a developer huddle, so this could be a docs huddle, that kind of thing? Maybe. Mm, yeah, or we can just call it Jenkins Contributor Huddle and just rotate topics. Mm, right. So without creating uh, additional entities, because yeah, if you create uh, uh, five different huddles, then you have to maintain five different huddles. Right. And if you have one, it's easier to manage. I like that. Good. Okay. Yeah. Other suggestions of ways to encourage attendance? Let's see. Events calendar to highlight. Yeah. Update the events calendar. You noted, Oleg, that the the meeting the meeting URL is not there, and that's a good one with the URL. Though that probably won't increase attendance dramatically. Okay. Yeah, it won't. Other suggestions. All right, thank you. Any other topics that we need to go over, that we need to review? I don't have anything specific right now. Yeah, so yeah, there is just a lot of things to be done. Yes, indeed. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks very much for your contributions and we will meet again in two weeks. Thank you, thank you. Have a good weekend, everybody. Yeah, bye.